So now we are going to learn about different methods for making a statistical decision. So the first one in this case is your rejection region approach. In the rejection region approach, the first step is to check the conditions which are necessary to run the test and you will then set the hypothesis for that particular test. Now, next you will decide the level of significance alpha. The value of test statistic will be computed depending upon whatever setup you had, right? Whether sigma is known or it is unknown for mean or maybe in case of variance, what will be the test statistic or finally in the case of proportion also. So we will see in different cases how your test statistic varies. So that basically incorporates the idea of the sampling distribution that we have been studying so far. Next, we are going to find the appropriate critical values for the test and you will write down the critical region or the rejection region for the problem. Finally, you will see if the test statistic falls in the rejection region, you would reject the null hypothesis and if it does not fall in the rejection region, you would fail to reject the null hypothesis. So these are the common steps that are adopted in the rejection region approach. Next one, that is your p-value approach. In the p-value approach, the first three steps are exactly the same. So basically, it means that you will check the conditions and then you will set the hypothesis, decide the level of significance. Okay. And so all these basically and calculating your test statistics. So that would be the same in this also. Now, the moment when you enter the fourth step in the previous case, where you have to calculate the rejection region and you have to compare it with the critical value. So in this case, we would find out the p value. So let us see what it is. So you would find the appropriate critical value based upon the alternative hypothesis. Okay. So here, if the p value that you have computed is less than your alpha, then you would reject the null hypothesis. And if it is not less than alpha, then you fail to reject the null hypothesis. And finally, you will conclude in your own words, whatever you have observed. Okay. So this is the basic or you can say the background of both of these approaches. So we will see more in detail now. So the first case here would be the test about one mean, because if you know, we will be working on two mean problems or the two sample problems in the next week. So right now we are going to focus on situations where you have a single population and you are taking a sample from that and you are interested to estimate or you want to check the claims whether the, the whatever the claims have been made about the population parameter are correct or not based upon the single sample only. So the first criteria that we have been looking in all these problems is about the mean. So whenever we talk about mean, we have two situations. So here you can see that in the normal distribution, normal mu sigma square, when I'm interested in this mean, sigma square has two options. This can be known or it can be unknown, right? Because when it is known, the test statistic would be different than when it is unknown. Okay, so if you can recall from the sampling distribution chapter, so we have found there that if it is known, then you will have your standard normal distribution coming into picture. But in this case, when it is unknown, your t distribution would come. So we will see how the test statistic gets modified here. So first thing that we are going to look at the case is when sigma is known. Now, when sigma is known, you have the first case as the right tail test. Note that any hypothesis testing, when you are dealing with the hypothesis testing, you can either have a two tail test right? A two-tailed hypothesis test or a one-tailed. When we say one-tailed, one-tailed means that it can be either right or it can be left-tailed. So here, when we say right-tailed test, so basically it aligns with your alternative hypothesis that you are looking at values which are greater than something, right? Or greater than the threshold values. 
So there we say that it is right tail. Likewise, in the left tail, it will be just the reverse. So there the alternative would be in the way that we are just interested to see whether the population parameter is less than the hypothesized value or not. Whereas in the two tail, as the name itself suggests, we are going to look at both the directions. So we are not just focusing on whether mu or the population mean would be greater than the threshold value or the hypothesized value or it will be less than. So we are just saying that it will not be same as mu naught. It can go in either direction. So that is the two tailed. So now let us first focus on this one. So we are talking about your one tailed test that is your right tailed in this case. Now, to understand this, let us consider a very simple example. Suppose a person makes a claim that the average height of Indian women is around 150 centimeter. Suppose. Now you want to test whether the claim that has been made is correct or not. And you want to frame it in the, the right tail test. So here, what is your 150? 150 is basically the hypothesized mean under the null hypothesis which is given to you. So this is the value mu naught which is already there and now we want to verify whether the average or on an average or in the population does it actually hold or not. Is the average height of Indian women greater than 150? So you believe you want somebody has made this claim and you want to verify it whether it is less than 150 or not so in this case you will frame your null which is the just the remaining half that would be mu less than equal to mu naught to test this what you will do will you will write the test statistic first of all okay so the test statistic would be in this case because it is this case of sigma where it is known to you. We know that here in this case x bar follows normal with mean mu and variance sigma square by n and then we said that okay so if I have x bar minus mu sigma by root n this would follow normal standard normal distribution. So that this is basically your z star that is the test statistic that you have calculated and your null hypothesis suppose if we consider this one null hypothesis in based upon your example would be mu greater than 150. So your interest is in this alternative one and you want to reject the claim that is your null. So the next step would be you would reject the null hypothesis if z star is greater than or equal to z alpha. z alpha is basically the critical value that you will find from the table and z star is the test statistic that you have calculated just now. So now if you consider it in this way, so somewhat here, this is your z alpha and this area is basically alpha. Now it is saying or maybe I could use the capital Z alpha also it is fine. We can keep it. So we would be rejecting the null hypothesis if the test statistic that you have calculated over here is falling is greater than this or basically it is falling to the right of this line. So you would be rejecting the null hypothesis in that case because it is now aligning with your alternative it is greater than z alpha or the critical value that is there so this would be your rejection region approach basically and in the p value approach you would calculate the p value so basically p value is the probability that you would observe a more extreme statistic than we did if the null hypothesis was true now here probability that z greater than this is basically what is this? This is the probability of basically, this is basically your standard normal, right? This is your random variable. So we are finding the probability that given the null hypothesis true, what is the probability that this z is going to be greater than your test statistic? Or you could say that given the null hypothesis is true, it means that 
this condition is true that is h not mu less than equal to 150 if this condition is actually true that the average height of indian women is less than 150 centimeter then you have to find out the probability that you would observe a more extreme statistic than you have observed that is z star greater than equal to it means we are looking at z star and greater than that so you would observe a more extreme statistic than what you have already observed given the null hypothesis is true so now if this probability is small here if you check that whether it is less than alpha if the p value that you have found is less than alpha it suggests that extreme result is unlikely to occur under the null hypothesis and then you would reject the null hypothesis so what is happening over here is we are saying that if the null hypothesis is true it means actually if the population has the average height of average indian women have basically height less than 150 if this is actually true then this probability that you would observe a more extreme statistic this should not be very very small because you have observed you have taken the sample and you have observed the p value you have obtained the answer to that now if this is not holding true if you are getting a very small p value this probability is coming very very less it shows that under the null hypothesis this is not going to happen so it means that it is happening under the alternative in fact so that is why here also we reject the null hypothesis if p value is less than alpha so you just align it with the definition whatever you have studied for the p value and then you can understand this point over here okay so in both the approaches that we have written over here we are first of all writing the null hypothesis you would check the conditions obviously you will write the test statistics so here you see that till this point both the approaches are same and then with, it depends whether it is a rejection region approach so you will find the z alpha and if it is a p value approach then basically you would find this p value next is your left tail test in the left tail test here you can think of it from this point of view that the alternative says that we are focusing on those observations which are less than mu naught so in this case so it would be something like this so you would have minus z alpha here and it is alpha this side so this side you will reject the null hypothesis if you just consider from the previous concept previous slide that you have studied so far so you have framed your null and alternative in this way okay so whatever just keep in mind that whatever the name of the test is that comes basically in the form of the alternative okay it does not have anything to do with the null in fact it is aligned with the alternative that mu is less than mu naught okay because we are talking about the left tail test when it is right tail it means we are talking about those values which are greater than something so that is why we will have the right tail test so now also we will have the test statistics so you see that test statistic is same because in these cases we have assumed that sigma is known to us now you would be rejecting if your test stat basically if the test statistic that you have calculated and you will find your z alpha if it less than minus z alpha then what you will do is you would reject the null hypothesis so here basically is negative negative sign here indicates that we are dealing with values that are less than the mean and which basically aligns with your alternative because here if you have this we are talking about minus z alpha right so you have got certain value which is falling z star is a negative value in this case so here you would have something alpha over here so if z star basically if it is falling in this region you would be rejecting the null hypothesis okay what will happen in the p value approach same thing p value is again 
the probability that you would observe a more extreme statistic. So, in this case, extreme can be on the left side also, right? So, probability that z is less than or equal to z star. And here also, we would reject the null hypothesis if your p value that you have calculated comes out less than alpha. So, just to keep, if you want to keep some things in mind, whenever we have left tailed, so that whatever left or right, so it will be aligned with your alternative over here. Now, one more thing let you should note here that this test statistic that you calculate over here is basically calculated at under the null hypothesis, right? Because that is why you have mu naught equality sign is in the null hypothesis, and that is why you have under the null hypothesis you have calculated the z star value, and in the you want to reject it based upon that only. So, here also you see z star is coming. So, z star is that value which was calculated under the null hypothesis, which means that basically assuming that null hypothesis was true. But still, if the null hypothesis is true and your p value comes out to be very small, which is less than alpha in fact, so then you would say that it is unlikely to happen under the null hypothesis. In fact, it would occur under the alternative hypothesis. Okay. And if you note here that when we say left tail, so left tail we are talking alternative is in this side, it is in the same way we are talking mu naught, mu less than mu naught. Then also if you see this value over here, reject h naught if z star is less than or equal to minus z alpha. Again you are looking at, if you see the sign basically here is same as your alternative one again z star is less than you are talking about the left tail same thing would come in the p value also because in p value also we are looking at the probability that z is less than or equal to z star so this is just a basic thing that you can just to keep in mind, obviously, if you are getting confused, then you should think about from the point of uh, alternative hypothesis. Okay. Now, finally, you will have two tail. Two tail means that it can go in either direction. It can be the less than mu naught or it can be greater than mu naught. So, when alternative is two tailed, then your null would be basically that it is same. It is taking mu naught only. Right. So, if somebody is claiming that okay, the average height is not 150, so your mu naught is 150 in this case. So, the null hypothesis in this case would be mu equal to 150 against the alternative that mu is not equal to 150. Right. So, it all depends upon what problem you are tackling. Right. Either you want to check that the average height is more than 150 then you would go with the right tail. If you want to see that no, our average height is less than 150, then your left tail would come. And or in the last case can be, you want to see that no, it is not 150, it can be either less than or greater than. That does not matter, but it will not be exactly 150. So, in this that case, you would have the two tail test. Again, your z star would be the sample mean minus mu naught over sigma by root n. Right, because it is calculated under the null hypothesis. Because when I say x bar follows normal with mean mu variance sigma square by n, so it is under the null hypothesis, so it is in fact mu naught over here. So then you will have x bar minus mu naught sigma by root n under the, it will follow standard normal. Now, you would reject the null hypothesis if the value that you have calculated, that is this test statistic, is greater than or equal to z alpha by 2. So, basically it shows that here, because it is two-tailed, it will have these two and the total alpha, that is rejection region, would be divided into alpha by 2 because it is symmetric, alpha by 2 and the in between would be 1 minus alpha. Okay. So, you can see that it can lie on both the sides, right? So, rejection would happen if mod of this value here is greater than or equal to z alpha by 2. Sorry, it will not be z alpha, it would be sorry, it would be z, z alpha by 2 and z alpha by 2. 
So it is coming because alternative you have mu not equal to mu not. It means it can go in either direction. So that is why your test statistic also could fall in either way, right? It, it can be it can be less than minus z alpha by two, and it can be greater than z alpha by two. So that is why it can be written as that mod of z star is greater than equal to z alpha by two, right? Likewise, your p value would be. Twice of the probability that z is greater than equal to this absolute value of z star. Now, why do we have this twice? Basically, two written over here. This two. So this basically accounts for extremes in both the directions, right? Because the extreme values can happen in the uh, left tail also, in the right tail also. Okay, because it is a two-tailed test. So in this case, we have this two coming into picture, and we check this probability that z is greater than equal to mod of z star so if you are adopting the rejection region approach you would compare it with the critical value and if it is the p value approach you would find this probability probability that z is greater than equal to z star that you can find easily from any standard normal table or if you are using any software then from there also you can easily find out so we will learn uh, all those things and finally you would reject if the p value comes out to be less than alpha now here if you note that in these three tests we have been looking at rejection region and the p value approach both now if you think so rejection region was an older method and nowadays we more work more in with the p value approach the reason being is that obviously here if you see once you have calculated the p value right now if i fix alpha at 0.05 i can easily see okay alpha is less than is it less than 0 0.05 or if somebody takes no i will take alpha 0 0.01 so it can be immediately verified you don't have to calculate the p value again and again once you have calculated it that is done right unlike unlike here in the rejection region approach because if i change alpha every time this z alpha value by two this critical value will also be updated and then you would have to compare it with this value the test statistic whether it is satisfying this criteria or not so that is why it is basically not straightforward and you every time you update alpha your critical value is getting updated and then you have to compare it so you are adding more steps to it otherwise if you look just at the p value it is simple because once you have calculated the value that is it you will just now simply see okay it is less than alpha or not so that and obviously it is easier to interpret also because we are talking in terms of the probability that something is happening or not so that basically makes our conclusions and interpretations easier so that is why p value is more used in nowadays so let us look at the example over here suppose a manu smartphone manufacturing company wishes to determine if their products typically last longer than 40 months it's assumed that the lifespan of these smartphones follows a normal distribution and historically the standard deviation has been around 15 months to investigate this the company selects a sample of 50 smartphones and records their lifespans and the sample reveals that an average lifespan is of 45 months so now you have to check whether there is significant evidence to support the claim that the average smartphone lifespan exceeds 40 months or not right so you have to find support for that and you have to take alpha as 0 0.05 so that is already given to you so here what is happening what you are given is typically last longer than 40 months this value is given and then standard deviation over here is given okay you will have 50 so it means it is about the samples n that is sample is n over here average lifespan it means it would be x bar for you right 15 months of standard deviation this is sigma because it is for the population so it means we are talking about the situation where the standard deviation is known to you and this is basically your mu naught over here so mu naught over here is 40 months you have to frame your null and alternative depending upon this so let us see how do we solve this first thing is that 
you can use the one mean z test over here that we have seen just now because you have first of all the sample size if you see that is 50 obviously it is greater than 30 so you could apply that test and also because your standard deviation is known to you so okay so one z test would come in here and now when you are trying to set up the hypothesis the alternative would be that the average lifespan is actually greater than 40 and rejection of or basically the null hypothesis would be that it is less than 40 because if you see over here you are saying that a smartphone manufacturing company wishes to determine if their product typically lasts longer than 40 months so it means here they are interested to see if it is greater than 40 right so you can write the null hypothesis as that okay no the lifespan is going to be less than 40 months so that is how you can get the hypothesis over here now you will the second step is to write the alpha value that is given to you as 0 0.05 you will calculate the value of the test statistic so x bar is 45 40 right is this mu naught over here sigma is 15 and you divide by root 50 this basically comes out around 2.357 so you can see here that i've written x bar just to show that okay uh, instead of capital x bar that was a random variable and here since we have the actual value of those sample observations i have calculated the sample mean so basically it is 45 okay now if you look at the z alpha so z alpha would be alpha is 0 0.05 so if you look from the standard normal table this z alpha comes out as 1.645 so because it is a uh, right tail test so you will reject the null hypothesis as if your z star is greater than or equal to your z alpha right because your uh, null over here if you see it is mu greater than 40 okay so you would be rejecting the null hypothesis if the z value that the z star that you have calculated is greater than or equal to the critical value the z star is 2.357 okay and so 2.357 you have to compare this with 1.645 so we can know that this is greater than that right so since the value of the test statistic falls in the rejection region so rejection region is basically those values z star which is greater than 1.645 so you reject the null hypothesis when you reject the null hypothesis this indicates that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the average lifetime of these smartphones is greater than 40 months at 0 0.05 significance levels okay so you are rejecting the null hypothesis and you are accepting the alternative that okay mu is greater than 40 that the average lifespan is actually greater than 40 months so this is how you can easily do your hypothesis testing using your rejection region approach here now if you have the p-value approach as you know the first three steps would be same because you have set the hypothesis you have the alpha value and you have the test statistic value also so what you have to do is now you have to now find out the p value now p value in the right tail test is basically probability that z is greater than or equal to z star that is a test statistic that is a probability that you would observe a more extreme statistic than we did if the null hypothesis was true so z star is basically calculated under the null hypothesis so this value was 2.357 and if you look at the standard normal table you will find that it actually comes out as 0.009212 right now you can easily compare this with the alpha value alpha is 0 0.05 obviously so you are going to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that you have sufficient evidence from the data that the average lifetime of the smartphones is greater than 40 months okay so now here in the last step if somebody tells you that okay no this is not alpha is 0 0.01 or anything else then you can easily compare it 
right unlike your the uh, rejection region approach okay so this was about the one mean test when we were trying to find out for the situation then um, standard deviation is known to you okay the second case can be when the standard deviation is unknown likewise uh, here also we will have the three situations so we will look at the left tailed right tailed and you will have the two tailed now the difference over here would come when you are dealing with the test statistic right because in, when sigma is known in all the three cases it would be same the st statistic would be same same because you know that example mean would follow normal distribution and in this case when it is unknown if you can recall that we will be using your t statistic or your t distribution sorry so here the right tail test it is in the same way that mu is greater than mu naught okay your test statistic would be what it would be denoted by t star because just to keep alignment with the t distribution so we are using t star here so here if you see x bar minus mu naught and here you will have the sample standard deviation so whenever sigma is unknown we estimate it using your sample standard deviation and whenever we do that so if it under it is under the null hypothesis if you replace the sigma by root sigma by s then basically it no longer follows your normal distribution but in fact it follows t distribution with the degrees of freedom and minus 1 right so you would calculate the t star now note that again this is calculated under the null hypothesis because under the null hypothesis we have mu equal to mu naught here right so that is why mu naught is coming you are not writing mu keep this in mind you do not have you don't know mu basically and you are interested to find out you want to extract the information about mu that is the average mean right or you can consider that same height examples you are interested in the average height of indian women and that is mu that is not known to you but what you know is your mu naught whatever the claim that somebody has made that is the given value to you or the hypothesized mean value that is given to you so the test statistic would be calculated once you know those values right obviously under mu naught that is under the null hypothesis because samples mean you would know right this value would be given sample standard deviation would be known to you n would be known so obviously here if this is known only then only you can find out so under the, it is calculated under the null hypothesis rest of the things would remain the same because here you would reject the null hypothesis if t star is basically greater than t alpha so you calculate the test statistic if it is falling in the rejection region or the critical region so here you will have your t alpha if it is falling in this region so basically you would say that you would reject the null hypothesis right because it is in this way okay the value that you are having is greater than the critical value so we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative again if you have to find the p value so p value again same thing even when you are writing z or t star that won't uh, matter the concept of the p value remains same so basically given the null hypothesis is true you are finding the probability that you would observe a more extreme statistic than what you have obtained now right and if the p value comes out less than alpha so you would basically suggest that extreme result is unlikely to occur under the null hypothesis okay so instead of uh, that z it is replaced by t in this case right and z star you would have your t star okay so you would reject because probability that t is greater than equal to t star note this this and this okay so again left tail would be mu less than mu naught because we are dealing with the left tail of the distribution t star again under the null hypothesis or test statistic would remain same in all the three cases 
you would reject the null hypothesis if d star is less than minus t alpha because we are dealing with this side basically. So minus t alpha is here, you would have your alpha values on this side. Right? So minus over here basically shows that we are dealing with those values which are less than the mean of the distribution, which are less than mu naught. That is why you are getting a negative sign with the t star, right? And this basically aligns with your alternative. That population mean is actually less than the hypothesized population mean. And p value, obviously, again, you are focusing on the left tail. So it would be probability that t value would be less than your test statistic. So you have to you look at this particular probability and if it comes out to be less than alpha, you would reject the null hypothesis. Okay. Likewise, you can have the two tailed. Again, it can be either less than or greater than. The test statistic would remain the same. And now uh, the same situation will happen because here you have these values. So here you have minus t alpha by 2 and this side you will have t alpha by 2. So again, the total area alpha is divided because it is symmetric. It is equal on both the sides and in between you will have 1 minus alpha because the total area under the curve would be 1. Okay, so you would reject the null hypothesis if it is falling in either this region or in this region. So it can be written as this. Likewise, p value again here also you are taking twice of it because the extreme values can occur on both the tails, right? On both the ends. So that is why we have this we multiplied by 2. Obviously, in left and right tail, we do not have, we do not multiply it by two. The reason is this only because we have to deal here in two tail test, we have to deal with the extreme observations on both the sides. Okay. And finally, we would reject the null hypothesis if the p value is less than alpha. Now, let us look at an example. Imagine that a Hyundai motor company is curious about the average fuel efficiency of their cars with the company's manager asserting that a car should have an average of 25 km per liter. Assuming that the mileage follows a normal distribution, the company decides to verify the claim. To do so, they examine 40 of their vehicles, so sample size is given to you, and find that the average fuel efficiency is 28 km per liter and the standard deviation across these vehicles is 10 km, 10 km per liter. At alpha as 0 0.01, determine if there is enough statistical evidence to conclude that the average mileage is different from the manager's claim. Okay, So this value that is given to you, that is your mu naught. Now sample size is given to you as n over here. This is your x bar and this is your sample standard deviation s. You have to check whether the average mileage is different. So different means that it can go in either direction. Okay, It is not left tail or right tail. In fact, it would be a two tail test in this case. So how do you identify that which test you have to apply here? Either the sigma is known or unknown thing, right? z test or the t test over here. Because in this case, your sigma is unknown and that for that you have from the, the standard deviation is given to you across these, that is 10 km per liter. So you could take it as uh, basically that the, the condition is satisfied, right? So for the rejection region approach, you would set up this basically, Hy null hypothesis and alternative would be this. Your alpha value is 0 0.01. You will compute the t status test statistic basically. So here, this is 28 is given to you. 25 is this value, mu naught, s by root n, and you get 1.8973. Now, if you look at this value, sorry, this would be 2.023. So from the table, you will find that t at 0 0.005 because it will be t alpha by 2. Okay, so alpha is 0 0.01 in this case, right? Yeah, since alpha is 0 0.01, you would see that 
this value over here is 2.023 so the critical value is this so the rejection region would be t star either on this side or on the right tail test right so either side here in this way either this portion or this portion so this is basically minus 2.023 and this is 2.023 so if the test statistic is falling in this region or this side you would say that you would reject the null hypothesis and what actually you have is that the value that you found here is 1.8973 so since the value does not fall in the rejection region you fail to reject the null hypothesis here and hence you will conclude that you do not have enough statistical evidence to reject the manager's claim that the average mileage of the cars is 25 km per liter okay so obviously whatever you conclude at the end is actually uh, equally important because you cannot just find the test statistic and you have found okay we are going to reject the null hypothesis obviously you have to interpret it in your own words because when you are working with any company or you, if you are working with a client so they would be interested in what is the final conclusion right and the at interpretation has to be your job okay similarly the p value approach the first three steps would remain the same and since it is a two tail test you would find the probability as twice of this and if you look this is approximately 0 0.0326 okay you can look at the t table and finally since this p value is less than alpha you fail to sorry it is greater than alpha here so you fail to reject the null hypothesis okay so here these values you can easily find using your uh, softwares okay so in this example suppose a physician is exploring the effectiveness of a novel diagnostic method and the established method yields an average recovery period of 10 days that is the old method it's assumed that the recovery duration using the new method follows roughly a normal distribution to assess this new approach the physician observes the recovery times for 10 different patients and records their durations in the number of days as follows now the physician intends to conduct a statistical test with a significance level of 0.01 to determine if the new diagnostic technique significantly reduces the average recovery time compared to the conventional method okay so here the data set is given to you unlike in the previous examples where you would you were given the sample mean or the sample standard deviation so here actually you have the data set obviously this is just for 10 patients likewise you can have a bigger data set and from there for those values you can calculate the sample mean you can calculate the standard deviation once you have calculated those values then you can come back again and use this method to solve the testing problem so the rejection region approach here would be you will use the one mean t test obviously because you do not know about the population standard deviation so z test won't be used here and the research hypothesis would be that mu is less than 10 so the alternative is that the time is actually less than so if technique reduces the average recovery time right so older method took 10 days so now we are interested to see whether it is taking less than 10 or not alpha is 0 0.01 and this test statistic again so this basically shows that when you have this data set x bar comes out as 9.5 s comes out as 1.58 n is obviously 10 in this case and mu naught is given to you as 10 which is over here if you solve this this basically comes out as minus 1.0007 so test statistic is there now you would calculate your critical region so for that if you look at the table so you will find that this actually is 2.821 so t alpha so alpha is alpha here is point zero 0.01 okay since alpha is point zero 
sorry this would be just cross check this value i think it would be t 0.01 okay because alpha because it is left tail only so either it, this is a typo error or if this is the actual value minus 2.821 okay so uh, considering that here it is the correct value minus 2.821 so your rejection region would be whenever t star that is a test statistic is less than now your test statistic is actually minus 1 right so it is greater than your minus 2.82 so you fail to reject the null hypothesis again since you do not have enough statistical evidence to conclude that the average recovery time using the new technique is less than the recovery time using the old technique okay so you fail to reject it it means that it is not actually less than 10 that is your alternative so the p-value approach over here it will follow the first three same steps we will compute the p-value so t would be less than this is the test statistic that you have and you look at this value it comes out as 0 0.177 so when if you if you are looking at the t table for the given alpha and for the given degrees of freedom because here we are dealing with 10 observations so degrees of freedom would be 9 right so for alpha as 0 0.01 and degrees of freedom 9 you can go up you can find in that table for the right tail test in the t table you can find out that this probability is actually 0 0.171 you can actually read it from the table but the t table may not be that exhaustive as compared to your standard normal distribution table so you can instead use the so software that we are using python or maybe anything else that you are comfortable in now since this p value is larger than alpha again because alpha is 0 0.01 we fail to reject the null hypothesis okay thus we will conclude that we do not have enough statistical evidence to conclude that the average recovery time using the new method is going to be less than the recovery time using the old technique okay so what we have seen till now is that we have considered the two methods of hypothesis testing so one is the rejection region approach and the other one is the p-value approach and we have looked at the test for the single mean and since there would be two situations so the first one being your when sigma is known then the test statistic would vary while when it is unknown then the test statistic would be something different that in terms of t distribution it would come also we have seen that how the one tail two tailed or you can say the right tail and left tail all these three tests basically vary what is the difference between them and how do we approach such problems. So this was about the mean.